What are your thoughts on hanging the mezuzah and the Shema? He put on the Shema and the Shema. I don't hear many Messianics or Hebrew roots teachers talk about them. I recall one guy telling his congregation that he puts olive oil on his doorpost or something. I'm a little lost on the subject and would appreciate your thoughts. Okay, thank you, John, for the email. I take a traditional view of the mezuzah, and uh, there have been people in our congregation that have uh, taken uh, the literal view and actually, you know, actually written out on their doorpost in pen the uh, various passages. Um, I put mezuzahs on pretty much every doorpost in my house uh, and on my property, for that matter. And uh, I don't think that it's necessary to have a kosher scroll like the rabbis say um, or anything like that. But and I've seen Christians and I've wondered about this, too, because uh, Chosen People Ministries did a promotion at the SBL. Several, maybe it was the ETS several years ago where they gave a uh, they gave a mezuzah. And instead of putting the traditional um, uh, scroll in it, that has the Shema and I think the four various passages that talk about writing the commandments on your doorposts in it, uh, they had taken the, the scroll and they'd put in uh, passages from the apostolic scriptures in it and put it into the mezuzah instead. And it was a see-through one, so you could actually kind of read the passages that were in the scroll. scroll. Yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a cool, cool mezuzah. I actually still have the mezuzah. I took the, the piece of paper that they had with the apostolic scriptures out of it and put a normal scroll in it. I did that simply because if I ever have a, a Jewish person over to my house, uh, especially one who doesn't believe in Yeshua, I'm afraid that it would be very offensive to them. Um, even though, to me, I think it's a wonderful thing to be able to put, uh, you know, something from the apostolic scriptures in. I, I would rather not start off on the wrong foot when someone walks into my house and sees uh, that the mezuzah has a different scroll in it. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. And uh, more power to people who want to do that kind of thing. Um, but I take a traditional view simply because... I don't, I don't, I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. First of all, second of all, I think that it's uh, a a good practice, and third of all, uh, it's much easier than trying to sit and write all of the passages out on your actual doorpost. Um, so that's what I think about the mezuzah. I certainly do not. Anyone who tells you that the mezuzah is some kind of an amulet or whatever that protects your home, this is. Absolute nonsense. That is not what it was supposed to be. The Jews were accused of this, and uh, they denied it for a while. The Kabbalists kind of actually uh, accepted that. Um, anyway, what are your thoughts, uh, Rob? Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, I broke I, I broke your mezuzah the last yeah, time I was at your house. Yeah. <laughs> and what I didn't realize is that it looks like a caterpillar had crawled up, like made it through a like when I went and looked at it. It was like. I needed to replace that thing anyway, it looks like. But we also have, when, right when you come in our door, my wife had found this beautiful, uh, like, long vertical uh, thing of the Shema, and it's, mm. like, really beautiful. And so we have that. Um, there are, I know, I've known people that just have a, they just print on their computer, they print out the Ten Commandments, and then they just, like, hang it right there. And I think, I think it's all great. Um, that's, yeah, that's I, I, I don't believe that we have to stick to what the rabbis say. I think everyone should know that who listens to this show. Uh, however, you know, there are some things the rabbis give us that uh, that make it easier to, to fulfill commandments, and I have no problem uh, incorporating those into our— but I'm not going to tell somebody who writes, who physically writes with a pen or whatever on their doorpost, the, the you know, various commandments or whatever passages they want. Uh, I, you know, I don't have a problem with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. They're fulfilling the commandment just as much as I am. Um, so— that's my view of the mezuzah. The Shema is a different one. We've talked about the Shema on this show uh, many, many shows ago. So the tradition within Judaism is that the Shema should be said th three times a day. Uh, that th isn't it? The uh, the ba uh, the Babylonian Talmud starts out with, uh, or is it the Jerusalem Talmud? You can tell me, Rob. That starts out with a discussion of what time of the day you're supposed to uh, to say the Shema in between. Matai Korinat Shema, yeah, Kriyat Shema. Yeah, that is that's the beginning of the Mishnah. Yeah. Okay. So there well, you go. What time do they? Uh, uh, and it's. But Erev, it's at, 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 in the nighttime. In I evening. should know that because I just read it literally like a week and a half ago. Anyway, not the point. Um, so, uh, and there's all sorts of discussions within uh, the rabbis of, of when things can be said. You know, if you say it at this time, is it too late? Now are you saying the evening, Shema, blah, blah, blah. 
I personally don't have anything wrong with saying the Shema three times a day. However, I don't think that that's what is commanded in uh, in the in the Shema itself. When it says that you're... what we want to be focused on is fulfilling the Shema yeah. all the time. Yeah, exactly. All the time, and, and that's the, it's the greatest commandment. It's and, the greatest yeah. commandment is to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and everything else in our life is it. It will only be fruitful for Messiah's kingdom if it stems from, sprouts from that love. And there, and you can't have one or without the other. Yeah, and, and for those who are listening to this show who might not know what we're talking about, the Shema is, uh, it starts with uh, Deuteronomy 6.4 and following. And actually, it, it has several different passages from uh, the Torah, including Numbers 15.36. Seven and thirty-seven and following. Um, so there, there's multiple passages within passages within the Shema that have been compiled together, and is I would consider uh, one of t- one of two flagship prayers within uh, normative Judaism today. So I don't have anything against saying the Shema. In fact, I say it regularly. I say it a lot of the time in my morning prayers. Not every time I do morning prayers, but. Regularly in my morning morning prayers, we say it every Shabbat at the shul that I go to. And uh, so I think it's good because it's Scripture. And so anytime you are reciting Scripture and uh, attempting to lock that into your brain, I think it's great. And I think it's even better to be able to pray Scripture, whether it's Psalms, whether it's Proverbs, whether it's out of the Apostolic Scriptures, the Lord's Prayer, whatever it might be. But the point is, is that I think it's always good to be uh, reciting Scripture. So that's one reason that I really enjoy the uh, saying the Shema. Um, but I think Rob's right. I don't think that the passage itself, you shall speak of these things when you uh, when you sit in your house, when you walk on the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. I don't think that's a prescription to say this passage of Scripture three times a day. Uh, instead, I think it's talking about uh, walking in a covenant relationship with the Almighty God and doing that uh, always. Always. 